Do you know how to test the alternator the right way for voltage and amperage? Stick around. I'm going to show you how to do it. Welcome back. My name is Brandon Hainline, your Jeep informant. And if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about Jeeps, you've come to the right place. Now, make sure you hit that subscribe button with the bell and let's get started. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to test an alternator, not just by checking the voltage on it, but by checking the amperage output. Now, normally this takes very expensive equipment, but today I'm going to show you how to make a homemade amp clamp or a shunt. Guys, did you know that there's a way that you could support this channel by not doing anything other than you normally do, not costing you a dime? There's a link down below in the description area. It's linked to Amazon. Now, if you click that link, okay, any of your normal purchases that you purchase anyway, it doesn't have to be anything Jeep related, anything that you purchase from Amazon, if you were to click this link first, it'll actually, a small portion of that will go to support this channel, and it'd be much appreciated if you would do that. So, stick around, let's get to it. Now, the average person thinks that checking an alternator is only by connecting the positive and negative lead to your multimeter starting the vehicle up and see if the voltage is somewhere around 13 or 14 volts now as this may seem like it's good it's not actually 100 percent accurate now at the dealership or at an independent repair facility they're going to use something like this it's called an amp clamp okay it's simply you just connect it to the negative battery terminal and as you can see here the battery is being charged at 10 amps now, the battery might be accepting a charge at 10 amps, but what is the alternator actually putting out? To find that out, you've got to find the dedicated wire coming from the alternator to the battery. And when you check that, you can see here that there's 57 amps. Now, some of you are probably like, whoa, which one is right, 10 or 57? Well, they're both right. 57 amps is what the actual alternator's putting out, and 47 amps is what the vehicle is using, okay, to run lights, wipers, blower motor, anything else electrical, and 10 amps is actually being used to charge the battery. So this is actually how the independent repair facility or the dealership would actually check your alternator, but how would we do it at home when we don't have these expensive tools? Well, let's head over to the bench and find out. Now, you can find these items at a local parts house, or if you're like me, out in the garage, with all your junk but what you're going to need is some large gauge wire and two heavier clamps now we are checking the amperage that comes off of the alternator and goes into the battery so that is some high amperage so we got to make sure that we have a, a larger gauge wire to be able to carry that current and we don't want to burn up any wires now the wire that i found that would use the best it come off of a really crappy set of pair of jumper cables you know the kind that your grandma gets you at christmas and you're like uh that's not gonna jump even my lawnmower off i haven't ever used them so i decided to put them to good use now once you get your wire stripped you want to make sure this is a good crimp now you could solder it you know and and, and make this connection you know solid and uh put some heat shrink over it and man really make this thing look nice I'm just doing this the old El Cheapo way. I'm just crimping the wires on there, on this clamps. And uh, we're gonna make us a little amp clamp tester here for what, $3 maybe, $4 at the most. Now, before we go and use our little homemade tool here, we're gonna have to actually calibrate it to make sure it is accurate. Some of you are like, okay, this guy's lost his mind. How do you calibrate a piece of wire in two clamps? Well, here we go. Now, the first thing you're gonna need to calibrate this wire is maybe a headlight bulb or some type of filament bulb that actually carries a load, okay? Now we wanna make sure that bulb works. Then after that, we're gonna take our meter and set it to the amperage setting, okay? Now, this amperage setting is, is really only for small amperages under 10 amps. And that's why we're making this tool, is because we want to check things for larger amperage than 10 amps, because the alternator puts out, some of them can put out 180 amps. 
Now we've got our positive multimeter lead on the positive side of the battery going to the amperage spot on the multimeter. We have it, the multimeter switched to amperage and then the negative is going to come out and we're going to attach that to one end of the bulb and then the other end to the battery. And this is going to tell us the amperage that this bulb is actually using. Now this may seem a little confusing, but really all we're doing is putting the meter in between the battery and the bulb to find out how much current the bulb is using. Now remember, your reading might be different than mine, but whatever reading you get, that's what we'll be using for the reference. Now what we're going to be doing is actually connecting the bulb back up to the battery, but we're going to be using our homemade amp clamp, which is actually called a shunt, actually, is a real name for it. So go ahead and connect one end of the bulb up to the positive and the other end of the bulb up to one end of this shunt and the other end of it up to the negative battery, which is going to turn the light on. Now, here's where it can get a little bit technical, so make sure you keep watching, pay attention, and just follow what I'm doing. Now, first you need to have your multimeter. It doesn't have to be a nice one, just give me any multimeter, and set to millivolts, okay? That's the little m and the v, DC millivolts. Then take the negative side of that multimeter and connect it to the negative side of the battery. Now, what I'm using here is like a little needle, a little T-pin, okay? You're just going to need something sharp to pierce through the insulation of that large wire that we made, okay? So now we're going to poke into this wire until we find, see there, until we find the 4.3 that we're looking for, okay? So I had it on volts, there it is, millivolts. So there's 4.9, we're looking for 4.3 now. There's 4.4, .4. and I'm I'm just piercing through the insulation to find that sweet spot of 4.3, and and pretty close right there. So and as you can see, if you come further out, look at there. There's 7.3. So that's inaccurate. You want that that sweet spot of 4.3 or whatever your reading was. Mine was 4.3. So this is where I'm trying to find that sweet spot of 4.3. Now, after you found that spot, you want to take a razor blade and just pull back a little bit of insulation there, so you can gain access to the bare wire. Now, this is going to allow you to put an alligator clip or the, uh, the positive end of your meter on to the wire, which will give you the reading that you need to check for amperage. Now, once that is done, you can take your positive end of the multimeter lead and stick on that bare spot of the wire, and now we got 4.2. Now, that is not the 4.3 that we showed before, but it's only one-tenth of a, an amp off, so it's really not that big of a deal when you're measuring 50 to 100 amps. One-tenth, not that big of a deal. Now, once we got our homemade tool, this shunt, calibrated, now we can go ahead and disconnect it from the bulb, and now we will test the battery to see how many amps the battery's charging without using that fancy... Uh, amp clamp we're going to use our homemade one and we're going to see how well it works now let's go ahead and disconnect the negative battery cable and grab our homemade shunt here and go ahead and connect it to the battery going to connect one side to the battery terminal and the other side to the actual battery post now make sure you have a good solid connection when you connect these terminals up because all of the energy is going to be flowing through this large terminal now you can connect your multimeter leads up to your little special tool that you made and you can see that while the engine is running, this battery is being charged here at 18 amps. Now I know that we have the multimeter set to millivolts, not amps, but we can't use this multimeter for large amperage like that. That's why we made this tool because the, the meter can only go up to 10 amps. Here we can see it's charging clearly at 17. So let's check the alternator and see what it's actually putting out. It's going to be putting out 60. Basically, if you have 17.5 millivolts, that's going to equal 17.5 amps that this is charging at. 
All right, check this out. This is plus 17.0. Now, when I cut the engine off, we go to negative 3.1. Now, why is that? The reason for this is because the engine's not running, so the alternator's not charging the battery. The battery is being drawn 3 amps, so something's on drawing this battery down. Now, you could use this to check for a draw on the battery, but remember, our multimeter can already do that if it's under 10 amps. So, that's not really why we made this tool. We made this tool so that we could check the high current that the alternator puts out and to verify that this alternator is working. Now, let's go ahead and disconnect our shunt, reconnect the negative battery cable, and let's move over to the alternator. Now, I'm gonna be removing this large main wire that comes from the battery. So just make sure you have it secure and away from any ground because you don't want any large arcing that could damage anything. So we're gonna go ahead and connect our shunt up to the alternator uh, terminal, then also to the that wire that was coming off there, the main wire. And we're gonna go ahead and start the engine up and we're gonna connect our tool to see how many amps this alternator is actually putting out. So let's go ahead and connect. It really doesn't matter which way you connect it up. It's just going to read negative one way or positive the other way. So connect the positive up to that one and then the negative up to that bare spot. And you can see here that the alternator is charging at 48 amps, 47 amps. Now that's pretty cool, huh? So we've just eliminated about a $150 tool by just a few bucks there. Now, as you can see, it's charging at 46 amps right now. So let's see what happens when I turn the headlights on. Let's see if it should go up. So the headlights are on. And look at there, 57. So that added another 10 amps just to run those headlights. Now all the current is flowing through that wire there. So this is definitely something you don't want to leave on there. This is just for temporary testing purposes only. Now I want to verify how good our tool actually is and compare it against this $150 amp clamp against our $3 homemade shunt. So check this out guys. Accurate, very, very accurate. So I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed and pleased of how this small simple little tool here can be made at home and be so accurate guys just remember this three to five dollar wire and clamps is just as accurate as this 150 dollar amp clamp now the amp clamp is nice to have but if you can't afford one then this makes for a good alternative thank you guys have a great day i hope you're smarter now than you were when you started this video Take care. Have a great day.